and well. Now, let's assume this world is a boxing game. Even the rules of the game, no. Heavyweights belong to the heavyweights. Middleweights belong to the middleweights. Lightweights belong to the lightweights. You don't take a lightweight boxer or a wannabe boxer and throw them in the same ring with the heavyweight. Well, African countries are not even lightweight boxers. They are wannabe boxers who are being put in the same boxing ring with heavyweights. You see, you got to understand that Burundi has the same sovereignty as China. Central African Republic has the same sovereignty as India. So when it comes to negotiating country to country, little Djibouti will stand next to China. Little Burundi will stand next to India. And when China beats up Djibouti, the world says, ah, Djibouti, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you able to take care of your people? Such a small economy, its population is growing but its land mass is not. The body can only do so much. The small economies can only do so much. And even those that have tried to survive, they are so easy to stabilize. Before you know it, there's conflict in those countries. And next thing you know, everything is falling apart. Such is the status of our Africa, ladies and gentlemen. And it's so important to me that we understand our Africa from the root cause. So as if Berlin Conference was not enough, when the colonizers were leaving the continent between 1958 and 1961, France did something that was just downright terrible. Made the African leaders sign what we, they call the, the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. France made the Francophone countries sign the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. Allow me to highlight a few of the items in the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. And I urge all of you to Google it and read it. And if that does not disgust you, I don't know what will. First, the French said, well, you see, we built a few schools, a few, a few roads, uh, a few hospitals, taught you about the fork and knife and sitting on a table and eating with utensils. We're going to call that the colonial debt. And for that, you shall pay to pay treaty. In addition, you will deposit 85% of your bank reserves with the Minister of Finance, the French Minister of Finance. Collectively, the Minister of Finance, the French Minister of Finance, will take all your deposits. It was 85% back then. It's now down to about 60. The French Minister will invest that money in the French Stock Exchange under the French name, you may or may not know the returns. Today, France is taking out of Africa, Francophone Africa, over $500 billion. Over $500 billion. We, the Africans, the poor countries, we're giving France over $500 billion a year. Year in, year out. And no one is talking about it. The latest figures are saying for every $14 billion that France takes out of Africa, by the time they finish investing it, they are realizing upwards of $300 billion for every $14 billion. So in actuality, France is taking out of Africa trillions of dollars year in, year out. Should any of those countries wish to access some of their own money that they deposited with France? They have to submit their own financial reports for the country. And if approved, they can only access up to 20% of that money as a loan at commercial interest rates. Figure that one out. That is our reality. It gets better. They were also told that if you need any military equipment, you can only purchase it from France. Your military can only be trained by France that France will have military presence in your own country and can invade you without notice should they fail, French interests are being violated. Language of instruction shall be French. All your minerals discovered, yet to be discovered, France has the first right of refusal. All the contracts, big contracts, 
private and public, French companies have the first right of refusal. Now, my brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, if you were to go home and run for president, and your first day in office, your chief of staff comes to you and says, oh, by the way, Mr. President, Madam President, before you start, I must read you the do's and don'ts as stipulated by the pact for the continuation of colonization. And your chief of staff reads this to you. What power do you have? This is precisely what our colonizers wanted. To leave us in a position that no matter how hard we try, trying to get a leg up is mission impossible. But in those incidents that we're able to, regardless, because that's who we are as black people, we're very easy to destabilize. Others might say, but Ambassador, why haven't the African leaders done something about this horrible pact? Well, they have. In the past, it's very well documented. Of the 60-something coups that took place in Africa, seven of them are documented as having been orchestrated by france and seven of those involved an african leader being assassinated during a coup and those coups were done precisely because those african leaders those pan-african leaders were trying to pull out of the pact for the continuation of colonization now there have been others other coups that were created by uh, just mercenaries who were running around trying to destabilize african countries and always because the African countries would have discovered a natural resource and they created those coups. So while the locals are fighting, thrown into a civil war, they will be siphoning that mean natural resource. We know the game now. We've seen them play the game. So it's not like there was no attempt to pull back, but the reality is even now, when leaders have tried to push back on certain issues, Next thing you know, there's conflict in that country. And who, who are they using for the conflict? Us. The people who are going to be toy toying on the streets, it's us, the Africans. And we are going on the streets fighting somebody else's war. Because we simply do not know.